Hallelujah. It's great uh, opportunity and pleasure to be together in the house of God uh, every week and in the middle of the week. And today, to to listen to hear these uh, testimonies, our vision can be more clear and our life life can be more understandable. Today, I want to talk shortly about God's view on prosperity. I grew up, and I believe many of you, um, in, different, in different surroundings, and even in church. Not long ago, I discussed with my brother-in-law concerning prosperity, concerning wealth, and concerning money. And I discover he is right now as I was before, and maybe may, maybe many of you, of you in the same position. Um, so so robbed of God's view on money, on prosperity, on wealth, on rich riches of the of the of the world, abundance. Finances, as Ilya talked today, and many times we already talk in our church, and we will repeat it more and more, is so important for us. I grew up in such a in such an environment, culture when when Christianity and God was presented as small island, without influence, disconnected with reality and. Uh, with the reality of the world and and Christianity and and God, uh, were reproached and shamed, and uh, Christianity church without without influence and voice. But but later on, when. When I met such a testimonies, which we heard right now about spir spiritual world, that's pushed me to to read Bible more more closer and 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 search out and find out the truth about prosperity, about wealth. Even today, in many churches. Pastors and preachers and saints in church just know Christianity as a small building, isolated, without without um, great future. In in my process, I know some portion of money is allowed. To have to possess, possessed believers, Christian can have some kind of of some portion of of money. This this regarding the few verses from from the Bible were were just few of them. One of them that money is roots of all evils, and. And on this one verse, Christians, specifically devil, try, try to base, make foundation for us Christians. And later, I tried to lose myself and to came to conclusion, some portion of money, as we as a Christian, we have still possessed. We still uh, claim for some por uh, portion of money. But... Problem over here, how big percentage on how big percentage of money Christian kingdom of God can claim. It's over here can be fight. One church can, can claim and, and preach and understand we have right and claim for 5% of money, wealth of the world. Another way, another people can, can, can say not 50. 50 for devil, 
50 for, for, for God. And other people can, can claim and, 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 and say not 75. And I, I found in this battle among the Christians how many, how big percentage, for how big percentage of wealth, money, we have a uh, right to claim for it. I discovered that that battle between Christian is worthless. We don't have to go to discuss about how big percentage belong to devil, belong to church. We have to come to conclusion. 100 or for devil or 100 for, for God. Why finances, prosperity is so important? It's important because as, a, as blood in the body of man serve to be a man alive, so finances is a financial blood to sustain, to keep alive our society. Finances really needed to overcome kingdom of darkness, of Satan. From these testimonies, we clearly see that demonic spirit, uh, uh, world, uh, demonic spirits, dark world is alive. It's a reality. And they operating using, using finances, uses wealth of this world to keep in, is in bondage souls of lives of the people to take souls from the kingdom of darkness need prosperity need finances to have to have tv and 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 everything but even but even if we do not include evangelism but life itself in the end of all, God created this world. He put all things on this earth. He is owner. And for us as a children, not long ago, uh, ago I argued with my real, uh, brother-in-law about, and he condemned our church. When, when I will, wherever I come in your church, Looks like always you preach and mention the subject of money. He, he is poor. That's, that, that's the fact. It's the, uh, the, the fact. But, um, but he against the money. Against the preaching about, about money in church. And uh, I tried I try to convince him about biblical point of view and I spent few hours to try to prove him that whole money silver and gold belong to God and he cannot go against this verse that statement from Bible that's true God is creator but accept this idea that what God created belong to him and next one belong, belongs to his children and over here on this statement that wealth of the earth not, do not belong devil God created everything but on this uh, it's, it's over here we, we are agreed together but to accept idea that riches, wealth, abundance, prosperity, what God placed on this earth belong to his children. Over here, we spent many hours in fighting and I couldn't prove him. Uh, I couldn't mm, because I <coughs> convinced, convinced him. He still believed that money is evil when you preach about money in church, this, this is the delusion. 
Brothers and sisters, it's not just one person in church think in such a way. There is many. He has he has big family, and I uh, try to show on his home example and say, hey, you have many children. If you have if you have money in your in your home, to whom first of all your money belong? To the children of your neighbor or to your children? He cannot resist. In such such a such a logic, but he cannot to come conclusion and and agree that the wealth of this earth, which God Himself created and put on this earth, God wants he that's His will, that's His desire. He He purposely place it for His children because on this earth. There is children of devil. Uh, from this, uh, why we preach and try to preach uh, on this subject is so important because when we talk about salvation of the people, <clears throat> that's the biggest value on earth. When we pray with our church, we have to strongly believe that through our ministry, we do not include the ministries and we pray for other churches in Three City as a, for Bethel Church, for Assembly of God, Vintage, and many, many churches. When I come in the morning to pray over here, I pray for great ministries in, on, uh, on, on, a, on a global influence as uh, for Prophet T.B. Joshua, uh, Shepherd Bushiri, Benny Hinn, uh, Yongi Cho, and many, many of them. When I come to pray locally, I pray for these churches. Uh, in three city, but we have to uh, regard our ministry. We we have purpose for our church, uh, given by God, and thousands of people have to come to the knowledge of Christ, and we believe it's possible. It's God's will, because people's soul, soul of. Uh, human soul is so important for, for God because there is eternity. After salvation of the soul, life change on earth. And uh, without, without finances, without uh, prosperity, we cannot represent kingdom of God. Who wants to follow such a God who do not answer, do not help? And bring you to nothing without influence and in poverty. This is not our God. Our God leaves very streets from the pure gold. And precious stone that, that's, that, that he leaves in un, undescribable wealth. And we have to accept such an idea. That's why we pray for salvation from, from the point of view of prosperity. I dream, I believe it will happen. We will have in our church business classes where we will encourage, where we will build, where we will lift up self, self esteem of the of the uh, of our people and every person who will come in our church church doesn't mat matter from how low a uh, low stage of life he will be rich because when you will be surrounded encouraged daily every service your your spiritual being being will be lifted up God will give you opportunities, open doors, and you will find out that God is good. He is, he is God of prosperity, blessing, and, abund and abundant life. Yes. Maybe we don't have to take just one place in Bible and concentrate uh, on, one, on one story. I like to read Bible from Genesis to Revelations 
and to see whole, whole, whole picture. We don't have to build just our belief on one verse, but stories after stories, parable after parable, descri describe for us a purpose of God, His will, His understanding, His point of view on prosperity. As, as we, as His children, have to accept His point of view of you. And even, that, even if we will fi found ourselves in difficult financial situation, there is God of miracles from the, who, who is from the very beginning create many miracles which are concerning attached to the, to, to the finances. Because finances, every miracle of God includes finances. Even salvation of our soul attached to the finances. If drug addict or alcoholic or per perverted person spend his money on alcohol, drugs, and all kind of nasty, dirty stuff when he receives salvation of soul. When God forgives his sin, when his soul secured in eternity, this money which he spent on sinful things will stand in his pocket. We cannot find any miracle of God, supernatural, which not attached to the money. God own his uh, money. God is owner of wealth. And we as a children of God have to change our point of view. Not on a percentage, how, how many percent I can have it. You have to accept God's point of view. You have to to have 100 God's will to take away money from devil, demons, unclean spirits, and give, give these finances to his kingdom, to his family, to his children. That's clear, supposed to be. We don't have to be battling in this, in this, uh, in this area. And any preacher, any Pastor, which try to separate some portion of money for devil, don't listen to him. Because God himself wants all uh, wealth. He create whole wealth for his children. I want to talk shortly from story from Old Testament. Can you read for me, please? That's Second Kings uh, chapter 3 and story. How God helped people who were lost in desert, in wilderness. Please read for me. So King, so King. Somebody is watching. See how close. So King Jeroham, Jeroham went out of Samurai at that time and mustered all Israel. Then he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? He said, I will go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, By way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and, and the king of Edom and marched on the roundabout route seven days, and there was no water for the army nor for the animals that followed them. And the king of Israel said, At last, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, There is no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him. So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elijah, the son of Shaphat, is here who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word 
of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Then Elijah said to the king of Israel, what have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Eliza said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall stand. You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, so that you drink, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the, the Moabites into your hands. Yeah, thank you. This story shows for us that three kings, when... Uh, King Jeroham, Jehoram, King Jeroham, uh, Jeroham uh, he has losses. King of Mo Moabites rebelled on him and and went away with with large um, profit property which belonged to the to the king of Israel. Let's we. Do not concentrate a lot on details, but search out the, the character of God and the character of humanity, of people. Uh, when it's good to, to pursue, to take back what you lost, lost what, what belonged to you and you lose it, it's right to go after it and take it back. That's one, uh, one idea. Second, even what do not belong to you, what you not achieve yet, not accomplish yet, but it's right to have your dream, your plan, your idea to achieve it. And if you uh, put these plans, it's right to go forward and, and to have it. Bigger house, more expensive car. Yes, uh, we have to have this mental, mentality and deep understanding that cars and, uh, and houses and, and boats and many, many other things not internal. And uh, we, don't, we, don't, we have to be in the right balance. We don't have to put everything away and, uh, and go uh, among the people and beg the money for food. God don't want such a, such a big offering. God gave for us the right reasoning that we uh, have 90 percent, and maybe far we will offer 50 percent. That depends how big income we have. But 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 to have such a, such a, a understanding that. God wants that you will be rich. It's clear. And you have to accept it for yourself. And that's desire which in us, if we have it, is from God. In this case, when three kings came together to turn back what was lost by king of Israel, and when they went on, the, on, this, on this battle, they traveled seven days on their horses and animals behind them as a provision in desert, in wilderness, water runs out, and they were lost in the, in the wilderness. And they, they were Caught in such a, a dead, dead end where is no way out. It can be in our life. Same 
situation. But for us, it's really important to see character of God, his ability, his desire, what God wants in our life. These three kings with their armies, far away, without God's GPS, God's map, maybe God had for them more stray, stray way, not seven days. It's indeed God's will to help God's people. But these three kings and these three armies, they, they go pursue their losses to take it back without God. Even in this case, king of Israel, a king of Judah, is what, he was godly man. But as a church today, we have to clearly understand there is logos, there, there is written potential will of God, there, there, there is potential word, word of God, and there is a rhema. In our life, for so important to know God's will, logos, deeply, un, deeply understand God's will, but there is guidance of the Holy Spirit. There is a rhema from God. And that rhema comes when we rely, when we ask, when we look for God's guidance, for his hand. In this case, these three, three kings, one, one of them was a rebellion king, that's son of Ahab. His father, and including him, he, he turned away from God and started to serve others' gods. That's nasty, rebellious sin against God. And king of Edom, he is pagan, pagan uh, king too. But king of jo 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 Josaphat, um, king of Judah, in this situation when they were lost in, in, in the wilderness, he came to write he uh, right conclusion in the, there is no way out. Death will come just anyway. Is it possible in such a situation to have hope on God. In this situation, is God can do something. If there is answer from God, brothers and sisters, unbelievable, un, unbelievable miracle happen on a plane without cost. What God can do in wilderness. King jo Josephat asking, is there is prophet, is there is rema, is there is a voice of God? Is it possible for God, for the Holy Spirit to be in wilderness, in your sin, in your sin when you lost? Without connection, where you solve down, where, where you on a point of death? Is it possible for Holy Spirit to be there? I want to speak to you, each of us. This Holy Spirit, you cannot fall so deep in sin, go so far. To escape his presence. Spirit of God is everywhere. And if we have such an understanding, believe in miracle, miracle can, can happen in your life, in your situation. Miracles 
happens today and as in those days. When they call Elisha prophet of God and is a prophet of God, walking with the Holy Spirit, he believes all things is possible with God. When we pray this every morning, we have to believe, I am walking with the Lord. I am walking with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God. He is everywhere. He is omnipresent. He, he is with me. Even that sinful situation, situation, we rebelled against God. We go astray. We forgot about him. He is, he is, we, we are far from his will. But still, when we call upon him, miracle can happen. Miracle can happen in your life, in your home, in your family. A miracle can happen in your, in your finances. In your, you can be prosperous. Later on, when they turn to God, when they call upon the name of, of, of the Lord, and Elijah, Elijah, Elijah said, bring for me musician. And when musician, musician uh, came and start, start to play, music is so important. As you know, music is important in occultic world. And there is occultic music which attract, attract the unclean spirits. And these spirits... And these spirits create such a nasty uh, things and destruction. There is, there is um, spiritual, godly music. When this, this music plays, spirit of God comes. His presence comes. When, where is his presence? There is opportunity for miracle. We have to believe in such a things. Believe that Holy Spirit with you. Believe in your home in your family. Believe in miracle that change can, can happen because God's character, God pursue you, God follow you, God follow you where you are and he wants to reveal himself and in this case where every, all hope was lost and they came to Clear understanding. God called us in this, in this wilderness to kill us. But it was not true. God, it's true God was there, but, but to save. And against all logic, there is prophet say, the prophet start, start to prophesy, you will not see a wind, you will not see clouds, but a valley make ditches, a valley will filled with the water. From nowhere, God Himself push up from the bottom on earth. Abundance, abundance of clear water. And these three armies, armies, horses, and all enemies were, were, were saved. And God prophesied through Elijah. I will save you. You will survive. You will survive that, but not. But it's. But it is not end of my desire. It is not end of my will. I will strengthen you, and you will overcome Mo Moabites, and you will take your possession back. From this story and many others. Through whole Bible, we can discover for ourselves character of our God. And he shows for us that he is worthy of our fellowship with him, friendship. To make the spirit of God which, which, which uh, hovers and, and, and runs and are around the globe, to make our fellowship with him to rely upon him because his desire always bring good and goodness and kindness in our life and he can do it 
even when we in the lowest place in our life in sin in losses in bankruptcy in in disease in many many other sin God has just one nature he can, he has just abundance of goodness of love and mercy that's why so important in our life Spe specific, specifically our church mostly, mostly youth I want to uh, say to you accept this understanding that God is good that God for my uh, for my abundance prosperity blessing that God wants that I have have influence that I have money his opportunity his obligation to open for you new opportunities new doors your opportunity to enter it to find the people with the right mindset do not uh, do not negotiate do not do, do not do uh, friendship with the people who who think differently find the people who believes in miracles watch such watch such a testimonies where God manifests his character his nature his will he wants that his people his children take over dominion on this earth with take the whole money you don't have claim just for a few percent of of wealth because in the end all earth will be uh, possessed by God again he created in the in the beginning in the end uh, how, to, how to say it saints, possessed. saints possess the earth that's the that's the end of, of the, the purpose of the kingdom of God as a church believe you will be rich take this first of all take that this understanding in your heart if you don't want to be rich just because of you push you a little bit aside become rich because of because God wants that you will be rich God God do not want God does does not want that you will be poor and with the with the hand the ask asking for help God's will that your hand will be full of of, of riches of, of money that you will help for others that's the will of God on your life slowly step by step these things will come in your life because as God help for these three kings not only save them from their mistakes misused when they were lost but he revealed his character and God prophesied even to the to the this sinful kings not only I save you your life but I will help you to take back your possessions in Jesus name